All right, welcome back everybody. Ryan here again. Uh, so today, finally D-Day, uh, kind of halfway through the day. Uh, getting ready to start this transmission job on my uh, KWT 660 here, 10-speed uh, manual. Uh, mainly the uh, high-low range is, was starting to go out of it. I'm getting ready to saw the truck, so um, as soon as I get this transmission job done, I'm going to put a set of kingpins in it as well. This thing is going to be up on the market finally um, after much awaited time. I've had people calling me and everything else about it. Uh, so just, just hold tight. Uh, once I get it done and we find out everything we have in it, we'll uh, have a price and have it up for sale and all that. So, um, but anyway, so I did a little prep work here. Uh, it's kind of late in the day, so I'm not going to get a whole lot done today. Uh, but just wanted to kind of get the, some little things out of the way here. So I'm going to do this probably in probably three to five video segments. So they're kind of short. Uh, try to keep them, you know, 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or under. Um, so there's not like a 45 minute video, so i um, just going to do little little sections of it. Uh, so today, what I'm going to try to get done uh, is basically just the prep work. Uh, first thing we got to do, or probably not first, but one of the main things we got to do, I've got to get that uh, the shifter up there, shifter tower. Uh, we're actually, there's where that uh, boot is, we can take that loose. And I believe there's four bolts where we can actually pull the whole shifter up out of the truck. So gonna get that done today and other than that I got an exhaust uh, cross member down there exhaust pipe to take off and also a, a cross member and I want to get the drive shafts out of the way too uh, so what I've done I'm doing this outside on the gravel so because I don't have uh, my big shop up there uh, I don't have all of it concreted yet so I can't get the whole truck in there so you might ask how I'm gonna do a transmission job on a gravel driveway uh, well, we've kind of remedied that. I bought uh, two pieces, four by eight feet of 16 gauge steel here. It cost me 250 bucks for two sheets. So I've got uh, got a pretty nice hard pack driveway here, uh, pretty pretty level for the most part. Um, so I got one sheet up towards the front underneath the transmission. Then I've got them overlapping with the overlap uh, coming down to this piece here, and um, I'll explain that 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 reason here a little bit more in depth in a second. Um, so this is a nice smooth surface, probably even better than doing it on concrete for the most part because it, it's a perfectly smooth surface. So it'd be real easy to move the jacks around on. And this is thick enough that it won't ripple or anything like that, like I said, as long as you have a nice, somewhat smooth surface. Now, if I'm over here on these ones and twos of here, that stuff, it's, it, it probably wouldn't work very well on that. Um, so you're gonna need somewhat of a smooth surface, even if you got a you know, rough concrete surface, it might be a good idea to get a piece of steel or something like this. Like I said, they're 125 bucks a sheet, which um, you can't really buy. It. <laughs> I mean, plywood is almost that much, I mean, in some areas. So, uh, so that's halfway reasonable. So that was my prep work. I put that down, got the truck level here, put that underneath here. So now we'll uh, go underneath here and show you what I got. All right, go underneath here. So I did, uh, I took my chains off the chain hanger here to get those out of the way because I'm actually going to bring the transmission out. That's why I've kind of angled this back piece um, so I can get it over here to where I can actually get my forks so of the front end loader uh, underneath here to, you know, to grab that transmission out and also set the new one in. So I'm going to do a little bit different format today on this video. I'm actually just going to kind of explain everything as I'm going through here, um, kind of you know go through it beforehand and then I'm gonna set the camera up and actually do the work so I'm just so that way it's uh not as as time consuming and you know so we might be like a fast forward or you know type of thing once I actually start doing the work um, so here I was talking about how I laid one over the other so um, coming out of here I laid this this way so that way when I come over it it's dropping down so I'm not trying to push over something now once I go back in with a new transmission, I'm gonna reposition these to where this piece is over top of this one, so that way it's a drop down, so I'm not like hitting a, you know, a chalk or a speed bump there with my uh, clutch caddy and my transmission jack and all that. So, um, so first thing down here, we're gonna have to take the drive, this drive shaft here has gotta come out of the way, you know, so we gotta bring that out. And there's this carrier bearing up here so we're going to take these two bolts loose here. 
then we'll have to take the two uh, cab sluice up around the transmission on the yoke of that and drop that down. But in order to do that, I've actually got to take this drive shaft off as well, the one that goes, this intermediate shaft that goes back here to the first axle. So I'm not going to take that completely out. Uh, what I'm going to do is just take these caps loose, pull it back, because this is a slip joint in here. So I can slide this back. And then I'm actually going to put a ratchet strap around here and sling sling this transmission or this uh, drive shaft up. So that way I'm just going to hang it up out of the way and leave it under here because I don't want to take the other end out if I don't have to. I mean, there's enough clearance where this isn't going to bother anything, but this has got to come loose in order to take this drive shaft. This has got to come completely out because uh, there's really no way. Because when I come out with that transmission, I'm going to have to come back close to a foot so it, there's no way to, to leave it in here so it's going to come out of the way so going back farther i'm hoping that this exhaust pipe here i'm hoping i can leave it in place uh, because when you're when you're taking that stuff apart it's just stuff's going to break and everything else and i don't want to get into any more work than i have to because I'm, I'm about two weeks overdue on this job anyways so uh, with everything i had to go to town last week and all that uh, so then farm stuff the big distraction you know is what it is so again um yeah we're gonna take these straps off here to pull this drive shaft off then i'll just take the two bolts out of the carrier bearing and drop this drive shaft out so um other than that down here we've got this exhaust pipe is going to come out there's a clamp up there where that that flex pipe is um, this, that one, and this one down here. Take that loose, get this guy out of the way. And then we got this cross member here, which we got four bolts on each side there. So get them out of the way. And then we got a clamp here. We got to get these battery cables out of the way. So um, uh, I got to be careful with these, these bolts like this. Sometimes they do go all the way. I'm not saying this one necessarily does, but sometimes they do go all the way through to where if you take this bolt all the way out, you'll start leaking um, gear oil out of there, which I'm actually going to drain drain the gear oil out before I pull the transmission. So that way I don't have to deal with it because I got to take this back down to Andelman's for the core. I get $800 back on this old transmission. So uh, like I said, uh, exhaust pipe here, cross my rest, come out of the way, get this clamp out of the way. And you got two coolant lines. There's like a little heat exchanger, a radiator type deal in, inside of here. And that the, that's a transmission cooler. So um, there's two coolant lines. What I'll usually do is uh, I'll take a pair of needle nose uh, channel lock or vice grips and just clamp these lines off tight, kind of crimp them off. And then we'll pull these uh, lines off here. And that way it shouldn't have any issues with that. And then we got a... Uh, Grease line here for throw up bearing to get out of the way. Another set of clamps here on the bell housing that have to come out. And, and then of course, it's gonna be hard to see up in there, but there is a, that clutch lever up here and linkage. We'll have to take that loose as well and get that out of the way. So I'm not sure if I'll get all this done today. Cause like I said, it's going on four o'clock and I've got some other stuff to do here this evening. So. Um, let's see if I'm missing anything. So I think that's about it. So that's kind of the prep work to get this thing down. Down to where it's ready to put a jack underneath and um, start pulling the bell housing bolts out. So, um, so that's what I said. We'll go ahead and that's why I just want to get prepped today. That'll probably take me an hour, hour and a half to get all this stuff off here. And, um, yeah, then probably tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday. So, yeah, might start pulling it today or, or try to get it done Monday. So we'll just see what kind of happens this weekend. So, uh, yeah, it's been uh, got a little bit of a leak here in the back. And it actually looks like that's a, that gasket here. I don't think it's actually coming from that output seal. Um, we also got a few uh, little wiring harness, speed sensor and all that up in there too, which I talked about that in the other video. I was talking, we had all the new parts laid out and and a couple things to ask for if you're getting the transmission job done. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it right now. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, get some tools out here and get to it. 
All right, so back underneath the truck here. Had a little bit of prep work to do. Um, got all my tools underneath here. Got the air compressor running out there, so it might be a little bit of noise from that. Also, um, started. I got a ratchet, a little ratchet strap across this uh, back drive shaft here, intermediate drive shaft, I guess you could say, in the middle one, because uh, we're going to try to leave that in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to start from the back and work my way forward here. So I'm going to take this loose, and uh, then after I get it loose, I can tighten this up and get it up out of the way. Then we're going to take this, uh, uh, I can't think of the name now, <laughs> carrier bearing. We're going to take this carrier bearing real loose here. Then uh, I'm going to use the uh, clutch caddy, which I'll show you in a second, because I've got a little attachment for drive shafts, starters, and DPFs um, to lift those up. And then, of course, we'll use it for the clutch as well. We'll take that out. So we'll take this loose. We'll have it secured up with the clutch caddy. Um, I put a, another ratchet strap up front there, and um, like I said, once we got this loose, we'll drop the back down, and then we'll use the clutch caddy up front again to bring that and other end of that drive shaft down. So then we'll have all the drive lines out of the way. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started here. All right, so that's all. Of the, we'll break that loose. Let's see if that get pushed all the way. Then I may have to get a bigger pry bar. Nope. And if you guys follow me, you know I just had I just redid these both U-joints on this drive shaft, so if you're interested in that, look at our older videos about a year ago and you can see that as well. There, and those, those caps are pretty tight on there, so I'm not too worried. Um, later on I might take some electrical tape or something and wrap it around those caps, uh, just so they don't fall off and lose all the needle bearings. So uh, now I'm gonna get the, I got plenty of clearance here, Drop this guy out. I'm gonna reposition. Now get the uh, clutch caddy up in here, and then we'll take those two bolts loose on that carrier bearing there. So.
this, uh, as I said, we're going to take this exhaust pipe, the inlet to the DPF, air loose. Here's a catalyst. These are usually an 11 millimeter. We get a couple questions, at least one a week, on these wrench hangers. They're just a big hairpin. Uh, you can get them at Harbor Freight. They're in the wrench aisle. You get two of them for like a dollar ninety-nine or something like that. So, So there's one side. And we'll, uh, it's gonna be hard to kind of see, so I'll just stop this right now, um, so you guys ain't just watching my back. But uh, we'll get over here and get this other side out, and we'll drop this guy down. All right, so I got those bolts out. I actually had to cut one out with a grinder there because it was this the two on the top over here on this side. Uh, you can't get an impact up in there, so I had to do them by hand, and the one was just. <laughs> It was just easier to cut it out and put a new one in it. So um, now this is kind of up in a channel here, so I'm going to beat this down out of there. And um, just like I said, I had to take this bolt out up here to get this bracket for these wires. And there is fluid. I put it back in, but there is a little bit of oil dripping out of it. So be careful with some of these bolts on the bottom because uh, some of them do have oil behind them. <laughs> member so um so i guess start on this kind of late today so i think that i'm probably going to call it a day for right now and um pick back up on it tomorrow or actually it's friday so it might be monday but um uh we'll get it done eventually so like i said i didn't get started on this thing till like 3 30 today so uh with everything else but uh yeah um and i don't want to get up in the cab all 
to take that shifter out all greasy and nasty and get it grease all over the seats. So that's going to be the first thing when I'm clean. <laughs> um, so that's something else to keep in mind when you're doing these jobs. Like I said, if you got something inside the cab to do, do that first thing, which I should have done that first thing. Um, so that way you're not getting grease and dirt all over the inside of your seats and all that. So, But uh, again, uh, all right, I think we're going to call off right now and probably pick back up on this in the morning. All right, so uh, we're back here again today after about a week-long break on this. I know it'll be short on the video seamlessly, uh, but we had about uh, about a week straight of torrential downpour rain here, which isn't usually typical, and I kind of had a, a lake underneath the truck, so I uh, had to take a little bit of break, uh, you know, in the middle of this, uh, kind of prepping this to pull this transmission out. So I get back underneath there, and uh, we got a couple little more, a few, few things to do uh, before we actually put the transmission jack in there and start pulling this guy out, taking the bell housing loots bolt, uh, bell housing bolts out and, uh, and, and eventually pull it, which would be part two of this series on this, this job. So the first, first video, which we're doing right now is, uh, the, all the prep work and everything, getting everything out of the way, uh, coolant lines, all that type of stuff, uh, linkages and all that stuff, which I might've explained earlier in this video, but it's been so long. I don't remember what I said since this has been like a week or maybe more. So it's just been crazy. Finally got a couple days here of, of dry weather and it looks like end of this week it's going to start back up again so I had to cancel some other plans uh, just to get this thing done and get it on the market and get it out of here and move on with life. And uh, that's one of the downfalls of not having a shop or I have a shop here but I can't work on trucks in it due to you know we just talked about some zoning stuff in one of our past videos and all that so um, fortunately maybe um, big if uh, I just put in the offer on a piece of commercial property today. Um, that'd be really close to the Interstate 76, uh, close to the Love's truck stop, all that stuff um, for building the shop. I already talked to zoning, talked to you know Ohio EPA, for septic and water and all that stuff. So put in an offer, we'll keep our fingers crossed, and uh, maybe that'll be the future home of uh, our business and and uh, can service a lot more people that call us. So anyways, I'm gonna shut up about all that and uh, get in here and uh, pretty much pick up where we left off earlier in this video and uh, get this guy out of here. All right, so I'm back underneath the truck here. I'm gonna try to work my way up here. So we got to we gotta get this wiring harness out of here, which it comes down to this uh, speed sensor here on the output shaft of the transmission. So you get that out. And then um, what else we got? We got the reverse sensor up here. So I gotta unplug that, get that out of the way. And then we got to pull the shift tower out, which is this four bolts up here. And then uh, we got an airline back here. It needs to come loose. That's the main airline that comes in. You know, then you got two little airlines here on the, the uh, off the shift tower. But those are quick disconnects up here, if you can see that. So other than that, there's not a whole lot. I mean, I got to take that, that clutch linkage. Sorry, that sun's kind of coming in here. But this linkage here goes up to that clutch arm right there, I'm kind of pointing to. So I'm gonna take that loose. And then um, that should be mostly it up here on the top. Um, so you might have a clamp up here on that line. So, but that, that'd that probably come off when we take the bell housing bolts out. So uh, that's pretty much it up here top side. There's not a lot of room to work up there. Then here on the bottom side, uh, We've got, make sure I can get this tried up. Like I said, I took that bolt loose there on the bottom of that where you could put a PTO on here and, and it's been leaking <laughs> the whole time. So we've got, uh, we've got a remote grease line here for the uh, throw out bearing of clutch. So I'm gonna to take that loose real quick. And um, there's that clutch arm up here, if you can see that bolt out right there so take that loose and then um, we got the transmission cooler here little heat exchanger in here so we got two coolant lines and uh, I'll just take uh, instead of draining the whole coolant system I just take needle nose vice strips like this and basically just crimp that line off then we can take it loose here drain the water and then we're going to drain the oil out of this guy and um, 
that I think will be pretty well pretty well prepped to pull this thing out other than the bell housing bolts. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get to that. Um, then once I get everything out here, I mean, it's gonna be hard up on top. It's gonna be difficult to video this. So I'm just gonna kind of, I already explained it. So I'm just gonna do it. And then afterward, well, we'll kind of recap here. So, um, so like I said, I wanted to get this stuff done today. And um, I got another, I got a customer coming in tomorrow for some stuff and, uh, and hopefully get this thing pulled out tomorrow and get the new one in on Sunday. So, and hopefully have this thing for sale next week. So, all right, and you know, maybe we'll have some good news tonight on that new property. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And uh, once I get all this stuff off, we'll kind of talk about it then. All right, welcome back underneath my truck here. Uh, so we had a little bit of a delay there again, more rain and nastiness and whatnot. So uh, I think when we last picked up, in this we were getting this all prepped to pull out so that, that's going to kind of conclude to part one so I, as i was talking went through the things that i was going to do so i'm just going to recap on those and actually show you what i did and here then um we'll be ready to start pulling for the next part of this series the part two we'll start pulling the uh bell housing bolts and then uh, get the jack set up in here and get this guy out of here It'll be uh, the part two of this but uh, i'm gonna go up here i'll show you what we we did here and talk about it for a minute and then uh, we'll kind of wrap up finally on this so after i mean it's gonna be like a 20 probably 20 30 minute video for you guys but it's actually been like a week and a half here <laughs> through this whole process so with the uh, said bad weather okay one of the things i did i i took this yoke off and i had actually had to use my one inch impact in here and it's two and three quarter nut which it's probably metric but two and three quarter fits it uh, pretty snugly to get that that yoke off because that yoke sticks out like an extra you know three or four inches of clearance that i'm probably going to need so I'm, I'm trying to get away with this uh, air tank here i'm trying to get away with not taking this out but I, I may have to in the middle of this process but i mean it's not a huge deal if i have to but um the less i can take off the less the less i have to take off the less i got to put back on um so up here on the top side we took the uh, shift tower out um airlines took all that stuff out and I'm disconnected. This truck has remote grease lines to all the, the clutch, you know, uh, linkages and all that stuff up here, uh, release lever and all that stuff. So I had to disconnect all those. Um, we had a couple brackets on uh, water lines and stuff back here. Airline, this airline actually, um, that goes back to the air dryer. So I had to disconnect those brackets and anything that's connected to this bell housing or this transmission so that all that stuff is all disconnected. So down here on the bottom, we had two coolant lines that go to this little heat exchanger, cooler, whatever you want to call it down here. Um, so I didn't drain. There's a little secret here you can use. You can get these needle nose vice grips and just crimp off these lines. And as you can see, they're not dripping or anything. I think Matco or Mac, I think it's Matco, actually makes a tool like this, but it's just basically the same thing. It's just a smooth like basically a smooth needle nose pliers for the most part you can crimp these lines off and you don't have to drain the whole system so those are disconnected and got those all the way um and then not everything is disconnected the only thing we have left before this guy's ready to fall out uh is these bell housing bolts here five eighths bolts all the way around um so on the first uh and that's that's where we're going to start we're going to kind of end this here and start this is just kind of the prep so basically we're down to taking those bolts out and pulling this out and that's going to be the part two of me uh, getting I said i'm gonna take the bottom ones out first then um then go ahead and put the jack under here and then take the top ones out and um we're gonna grab this guy out of here so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, get out here real quick and we'll kind of um go ahead and uh, end this thing <laughs> this part one anyways All right, guys, so that is finally it for part one here, uh, kind of getting the transmission prepped, everything out of the way, uh, drive shafts, air lines, grease lines, coolant lines, uh, yoke, all that stuff off the transmission. And uh, we're down, like I said, to the final thing we got to do is uh, I'm going to take the bottom bell housing bolts off first, put the jack on it, then I can get up from the back, you know, get it secured, and then go ahead and pull the top bolts off pretty easily up there. So then, uh, then we'll pull this guy out. Uh, so then we'll probably go ahead and pull the clutch and pressure plate and all that, pressure plate and clutch and all that stuff out too in the part uh, two of this as well so um so that's pretty much it guys for the uh for this this first part of getting it all prepped and ready to go 
Uh, like I said I didn't want to make one huge like hour and a half video that would bore people to death, so I tried to I'm gonna try to split it up. Like I said, probably into like four parts, maybe three, three or four parts on this. Um, so yeah, and I'm doing this all by myself. So um, I've done it by myself before. You just gotta have the right equipment to do it and um, be uh, be pretty nimble, I guess, to be able to get around and all that underneath there by yourself. So um, it is a little bit more challenging. It's nice uh, to have somebody else helping, especially when you're when you're actually pulling the transmission out and actually stabbing it back in. But I've got a clutch caddy and and all that good stuff, so it uh, shouldn't be too big of a job. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates and uh, give us that thumbs up, like the video. That helps us uh, gets our videos out there to other people. Or YouTube pushes them and all that. So that that's the best way you can. Uh, if you like the channel and you support us and all that, it's, uh, that's the best way you can support us is to do that. Give us that, uh, that like or that thumbs up. So um, you guys are interested in the farm and stuff, tractors and all that. As you guys know, we have a farm channel too and uh, mess around with all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, we always try to put the link to that channel as well. I've always got people asking, so we always put it in the descriptions of these trucking videos. So if you're interested in that, check that out as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, and uh, we'll see you next time.